Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Plants and Positivity. I'm calling these episodes, but they're really just thoughts and ideas. I am excited for today's plant chore and thought because I actually got a request on Instagram for a topic that a young woman over there thought would be interesting to discuss on this episode. So love that for us. If you guys ever have a topic or a thought that you're kind of like, I think about this a lot, I wonder what someone else thinks about it, leave it in the comments. Today's plant chore is my poor peperomia. This is one of my like favorite plants and it got rot. I have to admit, I don't really know how it got rot because I am a chronic underwaterer, um, but this poor guy somehow completely rotted out. So there's one last leaf left on it. So it is my charge now to try to propagate this one last leaf and grow a new peperomia. And this is a peperomia, what is it? It's a raindrop peperomia, which is the peperomia polyboiltria. So that's the plant chore. And the topic that was requested for today is toxic independence. Okay, so here I have just a tiny little bit of soil mixture since I'm only propagating one little leaf. I have a, a small little, I think it's like a three inch nursery pot that I'm gonna put this little bit of soil in and propagate the one leaf. And I gotta say, I was so excited to get this topic request because as a black woman, I know that a lot of black women struggle with toxic independence. I know we are not the only ones who struggle with it, but I do know that it is very prevalent in our community. Um, so I spent a while thinking about toxic independence. And a lot of things that came to mind for me were that toxic independence also stems a lot from vulnerability issues. And my first Plants and Positivity, I thought a lot of those issues stem from vulnerability as well too. And I really do think it is a really large deficit that we are facing in today's society. So probably a lot of issues that I would talk about, would I would probably see tied to a lack of vulnerability. This is the same soil mixture I always use. So here's the mix. I think there are a few reasons why people don't like reaching out for support or assistance, i.e. the, we just prefer to do it ourselves. And one I maintain is a lack of vulnerability. We don't want people to see us as less than perfect. We don't want people to see the messy side of us that needs help. We don't wanna be judged for something that we're unable to do on our own. I think that's one major reason why we end up chronically independent and not wanting to reach out to others or to even accept help. Another reason is that we don't wanna burden others. And that's the, I'll just do it myself because I don't wanna bother anyone else. And then I feel like there's a number of identity tied issues as well too. Like we're the strong friends, so people don't even think to ask us if we need help and we don't know how to ask for it. There's a bucket of ego issues that come up and that we actually think we can do everything ourselves and if we want it done right, we have to do it on our own. And then there's another one that's sad, but it's hurt or fear. And I'd say that's when we've been let down or when we really needed people to show up for us at another point and they didn't and we're left hurt and fearful of dealing with those things again. So we just try to do it all ourselves because there was a point where we needed help and may have even asked for it and were let down and don't wanna face that again. So for me, there were two turning points in my own toxic or chronic independence. And what I mean when I say that is that there were two life events that happened for me that really showed me that I did need to reach out to other people. I did need support of a community and that I couldn't do it all on my own. Those two life events for me were tied to one, my small business ownership and two, the pandemic. I am a small business owner and entrepreneur. I also work full time and about two years in with my business, I was facing absolute burnout. Like I was at my wits end. I didn't I didn't know how to juggle everything. I didn't know how to balance everything. The brand was going growing faster than I could even keep up with. The demand was far exceeding my supply. I wasn't sleeping. I was skipping meals. I had 7 day work weeks for probably close to 2 years. It was it was a lot um, and it was it was certainly not sustainable and I was very humbled in figuring out that whereas I thought I could do it all alone, I could not. And I ended up needing to ask for help. I also ended up hiring somebody. And that was just a, a point where um, really God, the universe, life just broke me and was like, you need help. Just cut me down to size, humbled me and was like, you're right, I can't do it alone. The other time was the pandemic. And trust me, I get it. It's been hard for everybody. Um, but I am 
the strong friend to a lot of people. I'm a strong daughter, a strong person. I'm very independent, um, but I really struggled through the pandemic and it got really bad around the holidays to the point where I, I did start vocalizing to people like, hey, I'm not doing okay over here. People, yeah, girl, isn't this rough? No, 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 I'm really not doing okay over here. Oh, I know, this pandemic sucks. When's it gonna be over? I'm not doing okay over here, listen to me. <laughs> and I had to keep like shaking family and friends until they like were like, oh, well, Juan's not doing okay. And realized that I, I did need some love, help, and support to make it through a rough patch through it all. And they did show up for me. So I did have a couple mindset shifts that helped me release my toxic independence and help me be okay with seeking support and help from others. And one thing I did was take stock of what it meant to me and how I felt when people I loved and who were in my life asked me for help. And without question, no matter what somebody was asking me for help with, I was ultimately really honored. Like just straight up, I, I that's the only way I can think to describe it. I was really honored when people in my life saw me as somebody that they could come to. And so I did make note of that mindset. I thought, well, if that's how I feel when people I love come to me to ask for help, maybe people I love feel that way when I come to them too. And that is something important to keep in mind is that asking others for help helps them feel closer to you. Because you have to think about the kind of people that others ask to help them. It has to be somebody they trust. It has to be somebody that they see character in that they, they feel comfortable being vulnerable with, that they think will show up for them and support them. And if you think of those traits and you think, wow, somebody thought that of me, that's quite honoring. So I kept that in mind. And when I needed to ask for help, I reminded myself, hey, you're pretty flattered when people come to you for things. Maybe somebody else will be flattered when you go to them too. Which does bring me to another point, which is that you might need to let people know what it means that you are asking help from them. Especially if you're like me and you're the strong friend, people may brush past it or not realize what it means when you ask somebody something. If you have also been hurt or disappointed in the past and it's really hard for you to reach out, other people don't know that. So sometimes we do have to let people know what it means that we're asking for help. So I do think if you are somebody who has been hurt or disappointed, and you're trying to step out and be a little less independent and ask for support for people, sometimes we do have to let them know what it means that we're asking for that support in the first place. That can look like, hey, I don't usually reach out for help, but you've been there for me at a few times when it's mattered in the past, so are you available anytime this week to help me with X? And I also think it's great. I've seen a lot of my friends do it. People let me know why they're asking me for my help. And it is kind of like a little carrot or it's like a compliment. Like, hey, you're so good at this. Can you help me with it? Hey, I really trust you. Are you able to help me with this? They do it instinctually, but I don't know that it came so naturally to me. And I think another great way to help people feel good about helping too, is letting them know their value in helping you. Whatever it may be. I think letting people know why you are entrusting them and asking for their help on something is huge. And I will say in my reflection, I did stumble across some old thinking and hopefully, hopefully all of you are better than me and you don't think this way, but there was one other mindset that I recalled having at a different point in life, probably back when I was like a teenager. It was very long ago. But I can say that I recall there being a point in time where I didn't want to ask for help because I also didn't want people asking me for help. And I know that's really cringy and it sounds really terrible. I was like, you know, a teenager, I didn't want to be bothered, but like it was, there was a little bit of thinking like, well, if I never ask for help, nobody's going to ask me for help. And sometimes it wasn't quite that bad. It was kind of, I don't want to bother other people by asking for help because I hate it when people ask me for help. Either way, um, if that's ever the reason why you are chronically independent because you're hoping nobody will ask you for help or because you don't like being asked for help, I will say that is a very problematic way of thinking. I'm glad that I am many, 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 many years past thinking of things that way, but if you do look inside yourself and you're honest and that is part of the reason why you are toxically independent, that definitely is gonna require a little bit of inner work and likely just some mindset shifting to any of the other points that I mentioned that create a better mindset around both asking for help and being willing and wanting to give it. We are not meant to be alone. We are not meant to do everything alone. We have people in our lives for us to be able to call on them. That is also why we are in people's lives. And I think if you are chronically independent, like I have been 
the majority of my life until very recently. Any one of these small mindset shifts might help you to be able to break the burden that you're shouldering alone. And you don't have to go from like far left to far right. Like I didn't go from never asking for help to I ask for help on every single thing I do, but I am able to take stock of the things that I need to carry out in my life and to know when to ask for help and to know that it is okay to ask for help because at the end of the day, life is beautiful because we have people in our life who can help us heal from the reasons we ever thought we had to do everything alone. One last important step, the whole reason I couldn't keep my last peperomia propagation was because um, I had fungus gnats over the summer so I couldn't keep the soil as damp as it needed to be. And I tried covering it with different things but I didn't quite know of this method yet. Put our propagation, oh man, darn it. I knocked one leaf out by accident. And you'll create a little greenhouse for your plant. Every day I puff new air in there and occasionally I may just leave the bag open for a day or so, but mostly I try to keep it enclosed, let it create its own little greenhouse and to thrive. So it'll get the humidity and the moisture it needs without me having to water it every single day, mist it every day and call on fungus gnats to please enter the scene. And so that's it. Here is our plant. And those are my thoughts on chronic or toxic independence. As always, I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think? Is this something you struggle with? Do you have any additional thoughts, any different thoughts? I also know there are lots of theories around our individualistic society and how that plays into our thoughts and notions around independence. So feel free to leave some comments down below and to join the discussion. And let me know if you guys wanna see how the peperomia does. Hopefully it makes it and survives. I can't believe it got to this point. Just goes to show we all need help. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I hope to see you in a video soon, bye. Okay, so I'm not gonna let this be a moment of shame, but it has been three and a half months since the last clip you were watching. And we now have some peperomias. Um, so the propagation did work. This, this one is so slow to me. It takes a really long time for them to come up. I know that soil propagations tend to go a little bit slower. So one leaf has the propagations coming out, nothing out of the other one yet. Um, this is what happened to me the first time too. The first one saw growth and the other one didn't. Let me pause and open the bag. Okay, here you go, this is a better shot. So see, there's the little peperomias um, growing out of the soil. Time and patience, y'all, time and patience.